Why Do You Podcast? Een podcastreeks waarin podcasters vertellen over waarom ze podcasten. Ik ben Annalies, ik ben podcastmanager en coach. En ik ga in gesprek met podcastmakers uit België, Nederland en ver daarbuiten om hen te vragen naar hun why als het over podcasten gaat. Je ontdekt in deze reeks dat iedereen een eigen reden heeft om te podcasten. En along the way krijg je ook heel veel tips en inspiratie om met je eigen podcast aan de slag te gaan. Luister je mee? Hello Mark. Welcome to Why Do You Podcast? Thank you. It is uh, a pleasure to be here. Yeah, and you are my first English guest. <laughs> What an honor. Yeah, it is. It, it's an honor for me too because uh, uh, we met uh, in the Podcast Marketing Academy led by Jeremy, who will be a guest in one of the next episodes also. Perfect. Um, but uh, yeah, I kind of look up to you because yeah. you have so many podcasts, you have so much experience. I have, yeah, I've been, I've been making noise on the internet since 2008. Yeah, um, okay. Uh, yeah, and I haven't really stopped since. <laughs> I think there was a brief period where I stopped for a little bit. And then I just, yeah, most, most of the last 16 years I've been making, uh, making podcasts. Okay, yeah, I think we can call you a serial podcaster, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But uh, was there one in particular that you want to talk about right now yeah. in this episode? I'd love to because I think it it relates to to a few of the things that I think um, you might want to talk about today, and it's a, a show called List Envy, and um, it is a I, I describe it as um, it's a show where every week I bring on uh, a guest, and together we collaborate to build a top five list on a topic that the guest chooses. And so um, it's really a show about curiosity and finding fun new things to be interested in or obsessed with. Um, you know, I get tasked to, I mean, coming up, um, I've got to watch a bunch of Korean dramas. I've got to make a list of films that were really creepy. Um, I've got to talk about Uh, fizzy drinks and rank them in order. There's all sorts of things that you know that I get to do, um, and uh, and get to meet new people and find out the stuff that is interesting to them. And it is just uh, an absolute joy to make. And uh, it's a show that has been on hiatus uh, twice. Um, I, I stopped once during the pandemic um, while everybody else was starting podcasts. Yes. <laughs> um, I was just, I, I think I was just, I, I was also going through some stuff at the time, right at the beginning of 2020. And I was just, it, it was all just a little bit much. And, uh, and so I sort of put things on, on pause while I uh, got my bearings. Um, and then later in the year started it up again and then worked with someone to help me find guests. because that was one of the, the difficult things that took a lot of time was finding the right guests. Um, and so I was working with someone and then it just got to a point where that was kind of, grinding to a halt and so like I, I put it on pause again and it's it's remained that way for three years and and um I, I've been telling myself for over those three years it's time to excuse me I'm sorry I've got a cat interrupting me <laughs> I tried to I tried to make him go away but it didn't work <laughs> Come on. thank you um yes so it's been uh, on hiatus for for three years which Uh, makes me quite sad, but I'm delighted to be bringing it back uh, in April because it's just, it's one of the best things I've ever made. <laughs> I just, All right, yeah. yeah. So. so the topic can be just anything. Absolutely anything, yes. Um, yeah, I mean, we've gone from competitive beatboxing to British Garden Birds to point-and-click adventure games uh, to anarchy. Um, it's, uh, yeah, all sorts of, of things. Okay, and and then who are your guests on on this podcast? They are, um, I sort of I describe them as a mixture of comedians, writers, uh, and podcasters and other layabouts. Oh, uh, have you had any famous people? Um, not in 
any sphere that anyone would consider famous, but I did get on someone who I considered famous. Um, there was a, a podcast for uh, that existed. Uh, it was a stage show in America, in, in Hollywood, where a bunch of um, comedy people, they used to do this monthly show and it got turned into a podcast called The Thrilling Adventure Hour. And if you if you like comedy and you like the idea of sort of old time radio stuff, that's what they did. They did this live stage show in front of an audience, um, but where the actors had scripts. And so they did it in the style of an old timey radio show. Uh, and so it's in three segments and it was just, just perfect. Um, and really funny and sweet. And there were songs that were really like the songs had, were way better than they had any right to be. Like they, they put so much work into these monthly shows. Um, and Ben Blacker was one of the writers and I just contacted him on Twitter, uh, back in 2019 and said, I do this thing. Would you want to do an episode of it? And he was like, yeah, that would be great. Yeah, and so okay. we did. And it was lots of fun. Yeah, I can imagine. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm thinking of two names right now that maybe, yeah, I think no one, really knows them here in Belgium, but maybe you know them because they're both English, uh, who I think would be perfect guests for, for this uh, kind of podcast. I'm thinking two of my favorite authors, uh, Danny Wallace and Dave Gorman. I would love to get... Now, Danny... So what's interesting is I, my understanding is that Danny Wallace and Dave Gorman don't speak, but... I, you know, they, Oh, they, they don't speak anymore. No, no, they haven't for a long time, I oh. believe. Um, con, con, yeah, con uh controversially yes i think okay. there was something to do with very early on in their careers um so once they branched they off from together doing, a lot yeah yeah i think once they branched off from doing are you dave gorman um i think that's where there was a there was a bit of a there was a bit of a split um uh, yes i i i have spoken to friends about this it's one of those sort of slightly open secrets um okay. but i like both of them so i don't like it when they fight um but dave gorman <laughs> yeah, it's is it's a shame but you can have yeah. them on two separate episodes oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah absolutely <laughs> and i think i've had conversations with both of them on twitter and i've met dave gorman and he's a thoroughly charming chap yeah i can imagine. um and i would yeah i would love to tempt him um uh, he's not touring at the moment, so maybe I'll see if I can reach out. Yeah, <laughs> let me know if you can. Uh... Oh, I will. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I'll certainly listen to those episodes then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, and um, so you're starting the show back in April. Yeah. Yeah. That will be around the same time, probably. Probably this episode uh, for Why Do You Podcast will also go live in, hey. in April. So yeah. <laughs> Kismet. All right. And um, so you always have guests on this uh, show and you have a, a a frequency that you try to keep up with like weekly or. Yeah. Yeah. I just I really like the format of, of weekly. I I like the I like it when a show can really. Form part of your routine. You know, mm. there's so many shows. I mean, even even back in the day when there weren't that many podcasts to listen to, um, you know, when I when one wasn't out, I really missed it. You know, if there was a, a you know podcast that I was subscribed to, and there wasn't an episode out that week, you, you know, you you really missed it. And um, I like the idea of being sort of embedded in in people's uh, routines in that way. Okay, so yeah. My next question is going to be, why do you podcast? But I'm also very curious on how do you do it? Because as I said, you make more than one podcast show and then sticking to a weekly schedule. How do you, why and how do you do it? <laughs> um, well, the why is, I think it's probably the thing that I'm best at um, because it, and the thing that I sort of um, has become my... I mean, I'm I'm lucky in that I've I've managed to make it my job now for the last, uh, ooh, eight six yeah, sort of eight years actually, um, and I take that really, um, I'm really grateful for that because it podcasting gives me a, a mix of all sorts of things. You know, it's, it's when I say it's my day job, I don't get you know paid to make my own podcasts. Mm -hmm. I get paid to make podcasts for other people, um, and and but you know that's 
that that's great and i get paid to to learn and to find out how audiences develop and play with the tech and help with you know building websites and things because I studied radio at university and graduated in 2004, which was when podcasting, the name, actually um, started to become the term that people used for this thing that we have. Um, and I I wanted to go into radio, but I didn't. In the end, I went to uh, going into web development, but the two tie up really well because a podcast is basically just a blog with audio attached um and so you get <laughs> to do a, all the... a good way of looking at it yeah yeah and it is it's it's the actual technical like basically the definition of it um the same things that power the ability for you to subscribe to a blog and get updates of that you know of new blog posts is the same tech that that powers podcasting just with one line of code different basically um and I like that. And I like the experimentation that we can do. I like the fact that we more and more now we can experiment with injecting different timely messages into episodes so we can get um, older episodes that we've recorded. I mean, I, I had to do this recently because um, uniquely in my experience now, one of my guests that I had back in 2020, uh, he died um, last year. And so I wanted to record something at the beginning of that episode. And, you know, you can't do that on YouTube. You can't, mm -hmm. you know, there's other places that you can't do that. But with podcasting, you can insert uh, something dynamically or you can re-record something and put it in the episode. And, and then when people discover that episode, they can hear the context of, you know, who this person was and stuff. And um, the ability to to be scrappy and to play around with the tech um, and um, to to bend it to to your will is is really great um and something I, I really enjoy and then in terms of how um so i have uh two regular sort of weekly shows at the moment and one of them a friend edits um and that's a very easy record because it's just me and him um and and you know most of the time i don't have to do any prep because he knows what he wants to talk about and so uh we'll record every friday and that's just enjoyable and then uh, I've now actually I've, I've asked him, can you edit episodes? Um, and so there's the, so you know that that one's sort of made fairly easy. Um, and then with List Envy, I use as much automation as I can to manage the process. So I reach out to to humans um, to try and find good guests, and then I will they sort of get put lovingly and gracefully through a pipeline where they give some details about the list that they want to make um, and then they get invited to pick a date to record the episode and sort of it all just get managed gets managed that way without me having to go back and forth and try and keep all of these different episodes in my head because I want to be able to record as many as I can and have them in a big backlog um, and and not have to keep all of that in my brain because it would be very difficult so yeah there's a lot of automation yeah, yeah, that's that's a smart way to do it. Yeah, but I, I, I guess you have to also, you do need some time to prepare yourself because you also have to make your your own list. Yes, and yeah. at the moment, because I'm gearing up for the new season, um, I've got four or five episodes that are being recorded in the next two weeks. So some of them are easy enough because all I've got to do is sit and rank and and you know come up with my rankings of things yeah. um others like the you know i've got to do top five korean uh sort of rom-com tv series that means i've got to watch a lot of first episodes of korean tv shows uh -huh. um to see what you know i i can i can uh create as as my five yeah which is you know feel, uh, people choose uh these these weird topics like korean rom-com series just to <laughs> to say ah oh, let's let's uh, give mark a challenge <laughs> um to be honest I, I i wouldn't put it past some people but i think what i love is that people sometimes they like with a lot of people they just they know straight away and they're like this is the thing that i want to talk about um and and so with this person it ha you know it just so happened to be because they watch a lot of them so it was like okay cool we'll we'll do that um but things like the solo competitive beatboxing i did not know that that was a world that existed at all yeah. um and 
you know, didn't know that it was competitive. I didn't know that there had to be a solo definition as opposed to group beatbox beatboxing. <laughs> like I didn't know any of this. And I now have an opinion on beatboxing. Um, and I have decent opinions on beatboxing because I really got into it. Yeah. And I was like, this is brilliant. I want this to be a sport, like a pro like, and the thing is, it actually is a big spectacle. And I didn't realize this. There's a huge, um, a huge scene in, in Europe. Um, and, and they, they, uh, it's, it's global actually, but they, I think a lot of the, um, the, the big battles are held, um, in these like big stadiums. Um, or these big arenas, and it's like it's a whole new world, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's what I also love about podcasting, and not only making my own shows, uh, but also for for clients producing other people's podcasts. You learn oh, so, so much. much. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. So, are there any other things besides um, the the whole new world of beatboxing that? Uh, your podcast uh has given you or taught you yeah um i think ooh uh actually i think these are some of the things that we've already talked about um i think i've met some really like apart from you know the people that i consider famous um i've met some like really charming people and when you have a conversation i mean when i did a lot of these to begin with because it was in 2019 um, we were still, I was still using Skype and cause everyone sort of was then, um, we hadn't quite all moved to like Riverside and Squadcast and, you know, or, or Zoom. Um, and so I didn't see people. Um, and there, there were one or two times where I just had the warmest conversations. Um, there's, there's one I, I remember in particular, we did uh, top British top five British foods, and it was with a, a, a woman in America. And uh, another one that I listened to recently, which was top five literary heroines. Um, and they were both just again, like you, you can't see the person's face, but we were both having an absolute ball, just like laughing, and it was just so warm and charming and lovely. And that's a great way to spend an hour a week you know what i mean meeting someone and 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 realizing you hit it off in a way that you didn't realize you would with a complete stranger and just feeling like wow i just feel at ease you know that's a wonderful thing to be able to experience yeah it's amazing isn't it yeah <laughs> so um yeah any uh big blunders or uh bloopers we just had your cat uh also in the show but uh <laughs> He, um, but both of my cats uh, are pretty insistent that they should be on more podcasts. <laughs> um, but so, um, in terms of blunders, like a, a pretty big one is one that I sort of am still living through at the moment. Um, I started a daily show. Uh, I've done a number of daily shows, and I, I, I enjoy them. My particular type of daily show tends to be quite sort of low effort and relaxed and chatty and i just sit here turn on the mic and um you know I, I usually have an idea of what i want to talk about and and just go and i enjoy that and you know i've been lucky enough that, that other people have enjoyed that as well i did one during the pandemic so while i put list envy on pause i was doing this um daily show to keep myself and other people company during the pandemic because we were all a bit frightened we were all a bit unsure of of what you know of how things were going to go mm -hmm. uh and and you know and so i i sort of had this idea i'm just going to show up every weekday for half an hour and just be with the listener effectively um and i really enjoyed doing that and so i started doing something like that again at the end of last year f specifically for creative people and i ended up sort of um ruining it <laughs> because i put 
way too much pressure on on the project. On, on it became a project, you know. It became like a a capital T thing. Like it suddenly became a thing, and then it had to be that thing had to justify itself, and it had to get bigger and better. And uh, you know, I, I had to really hone down. And I, like I did a lot of really good work with Jeremy, and he gave me some wonderful uh, wonderful uh, advice. Uh, and you know, with with the marketing uh, academy in general uh, that were both. Uh, in and all of that was all good but it it was piling on so much pressure and that in the middle of a couple of other things um it it just it turned out that i think what i realized at the end and this is probably not the kind of blooper or blunder you were thinking about um but you know i figured it'd be worth talking about because it's you know it's it can be real for people Uh um i think i I ended up realizing that I was leaning on the podcast to provide more than it could. Um, it, I, I wanted it to like meet all my needs. I thought, well, th- if I do this bit here and then I can meet the this need here, like I can make money through this offering and it's an opportunity for me to go and do other things. And there were certain needs that it could not meet. And because it was taking up all of my time, I couldn't meet those needs in other ways. Um, and so I ended up just sort of bur- kind of hitting hitting a wall pretty quickly and just going... I, yeah, I think I need to take. I need to step back for a bit, uh, or or change it, and and you know, sort of calm it down and and take the pressure off it, so that it can maybe just go back to what it was originally, instead of trying to make this really tightly produced thing. It just it needs to be more natural, um, and so that's sort of where I am with that. And it's it's something that you know, uh, as we record now in in sort of mid March, it's still something that I'm um just practicing a bit of self care around you know to to make sure that um i don't make any sudden decisions and and move slowly because it was a lot of work to be doing for you know recorded 72 or 73 episodes uh i you know i never missed a day um and which is all fine but like i started doing so much more every day because i had such high hopes for the show and it's you know ultimately it became unsustainable and um something that i think is worth considering for anyone who does creative work is like how good at you how good are you at recognizing the signs of burnout because it Mm -hmm. turns out i'm really bad at it um (laughs) i don't know when it's coming um because i'm like no i'm just i'm i keep on going and i'm doing the stuff and it's all great and it, and it can feel great up until it just suddenly doesn't. Um, and so I think there's, you know, there, there's really something to think about in terms of if you are putting a lot of work, not just work, but heaping a lot of pressure on a project, especially something like a podcast, which is such a slow thing to grow. Um, and, it, it, you know, the, the, the things that it's best for are sometimes not what we need at the time because, you know, we, we're putting so much work and we want things to grow and grow and podcasts often don't grow at the speed that we think or hope they should and so you know if you don't have a a a good head screwed on with that i think it can be um quite challenging yeah yeah and and i think it's a great lesson learned and also um i feel thank you for sharing this because i feel it's it's uh it's comforting in a way to to hear that uh, even a, a a seasoned very experienced experienced podcaster can also feel still feel the the overwhelm and the yeah putting pressure on yourself yeah definitely i mean i've been doing this since 2008 um and yeah it's um you learn like with every project i think you learn something new about the work and about yourself Mm -hmm. yeah yeah very true very true um so um what is for you the the most important ingredient of a a good podcast joy joy ah oh, yeah nice yeah you've I, you've got to love doing it um you've got to love doing it because kind of akin to what i was just saying no, 
you don't have to love it every day because there are just going to be some days where it's like, oh God, I've, you know, I've, I've got to, I've got to get this out and I'm busy and there's other things and, you know, but overall, I think you've got to love it because no amount of pushing through, I'll say that again because I bumped the microphone a little, no amount of pushing through is going to get you where you want to be, especially if you're the only one doing it. You know, if you've got a team around you and people you can work with and lean on and speak to and get advice from, and I don't just mean like a community, but actual like people around you, um, if 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 you've got that, then it really does lighten the load. But if you're if you're on your own doing this, and that includes you know just recording something and sending it off to an editor, you know you're still you're still kind of on your own doing it to a degree. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if it if it's not bringing you joy, um, then you know it's not worth the you know the the pressure that it, that it it can um, can create. So I think find that joy find ways to make it easier when it becomes difficult find ways to take stuff off your plate or to lighten your load um so that you can keep enjoying it so you can keep that joy there because whether it's for your podcasting for your business or for pleasure or for whatever else um you've still got to have the the joy of turning on the mic and speaking to people or sharing your own ideas um because that is because that comes through as well like it comes through in the audio um that joy you can you can hear it and you can hear people's enthusiasm you heard me earlier talking about competitive beatboxing and all the rest of it like you hear the joy you hear the way the mouth up turns and the and the energy changes like all of that is there and the same is true when you're really tired and you're just like okay i said i'd get this episode out so it's coming out you know it's all it's, <laughs> yeah. it all ends up on the yeah, in the recording so um mm. yeah keep keep the joy in there Okay. Yeah, that's a really that's a really nice one, Joy. All right. Yeah. Yeah, and it's true, eh? Because I don't record the video for me. Podcast is is audio. Um I'm old school. Um so <laughs> so but yeah, people can hear it and I can see it, but yeah, I, yeah, I'm pretty sure my listeners will um will all hear it in your voice. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think if you if you got the same if you asked someone to read the same line of dialogue and said do it straight faced, now do it smiling and now do it frowning, you would certainly hear the difference when they're smiling because it just it changes and 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 you know it's more likely to make us smile as well because that kind of stuff is is infectious. Yes. Cool. Um so yeah, one more question. Well, my goal was 100 podcasts, but uh I think we're almost there uh and uh so but I'm just going to continue doing this because I'm loving it. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to ask you the question too um because yeah this was my first English spoken episode but uh, also I think it went really well. So uh <laughs> I I I feel I feel that is the case. Yeah, thank you. So uh who can I invite um who would you uh, nominate to be a guest on this podcast? Gosh, um, I need to think about someone. Uh, I, I am. Yes, I don't have a good answer for this <laughs> off the top of my head, but I will have an answer for you. I I, I know sometimes I, sp- I spring this question on people yeah. and they don't have an answer immediately. Yeah. So you can uh, you can let me know afterwards also. But uh, maybe one of your clients that you produce podcasts for? Yeah. Um, yes. Um, I am lucky enough to work with a gentleman called Lorin Kren. He is a relationship coach and a hypnotherapist, and he has a show uh, called the Masculine and Feminine Dynamics Podcast. Uh, and that's what he talks about. He talks about sort of polarity between uh, the masculine and the feminine, um, however you identify. Um, and it is completely i mean it's just it's so not a world that i was in any way um familiar with and it has been the case for for a few of the shows that i've been lucky enough to to work on um but i think he's got a great uh sort of trajectory and as someone who i know is putting a load of thought and effort um into the podcast and seeing that it is paying off because he's got an audience and he's being able to speak directly to that audience and build that relationship, um, then that is the first name that comes to mind. Okay. Interesting, yeah. 
So yeah, I will uh, definitely put uh, put him on the list. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Pleasure. All right, and also thank you so much for your time for being my first uh, guest from uh, overseas. I can say it because you're in the UK. <laughs> and it is, uh, it is an honor. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. And I wish you all the best with uh, all your podcast projects and a lot of joy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, Thank we'll you. see each other in the Podcast Marketing Academy. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Zo, zo. Die zit er weer op. Dank je wel voor het luisteren. Ik ben heel blij dat jij erbij was. En uh, als je geen enkele nieuwe aflevering wil missen, volg dan deze podcast. En uh, als je mij en mijn gast een heel groot plezier wil doen, dan, uh, dan maak je ons heel blij met uh, het geven van vijf stevetjes in Spotify of een, uh, een leuke review op Apple Podcasts of uh, waar dat je ook luistert. En uh, we vinden het ook altijd heel leuk om van jou te horen, dus uh, stuur ons gerust een berichtje. Alle contactgegevens en linkjes staan in de show notes. Tot de volgende!